Hello, good morning to everyone. I really hope that yesterday you had had a fantastic All Saints or Halloween day. It is my pleasure to present today another Europark uh, Federation webinar, one of the series of the sustainable tourism. But before starting, I would like just to recall some basic uh, webinar rules. So this webinar is being recorded. Please start or stop your video camera at your convenience. Please write your questions, comments in the Zoom chat. We will do our best to answer them if time allows. And all presentations and recording will be available in our website in one week or so. So for those who doesn't know us, the Europark Federation is the oldest. We are just celebrating 50 years uh, this year and largest uh, European network of protected areas. We count with more than 400 members from uh, 40 countries. We are organized in eight sections, ge geographical sections, and we have three offices. So the headquarters are located in uh, Regensburg in Germany. We have an office in uh, Brussels, and then we have a third office in the natural park of Colcerola in Barcelona, where I am based. My name is Teresa Pastor, and I manage the European Charter for, uh, for Sustainable Tourism in Protected Areas. Currently, we have 92 uh, protected areas that have been awarded. They are, have been uh, considered sustainable destinations, plus two transboundary uh, sustainable destinations from uh, 15 countries. These protected areas receive a high volume of tourists, tourists each year which contributes to the socioeconomic development of the areas, the regions where they are located. As for exa an example, uh, from 14 uh, awarded areas um, last year, they received in a whole, annual, uh, the annual day um, visitor numbers were 8 million and the annual overnight stays were 27 million. Of course, this creates remarkable impacts with positive economic impact, but at the same time, significant social and ecological impact, especially in terms of carbon emissions. Carbon emissions that contribute to climate change, which in turn is one of the biggest threats that tourism is facing uh, nowadays. Tourism is one of the sectors most vulnerable to climate, to climate change, global warming, because of course, many uh, destinations are becoming very, very hot. They are flooded, they are uh, getting uh, fires. So uh, this is one of the most uh, affected uh, sectors. According to the uh, World Tourism Organization from, from the United Nations, the future resilience of tourism will depend on the sector's ability to embrace a low carbon pathway and cut emissions by 50% by 2030. We are in 2023, so seven years left. So understanding which economic tourism activities are generating the highest impact is crucial for protected areas, for the tourism business, and for the travel agencies that organize them in order to uh, direct the efforts uh, to re towards reducing these impacts, to look for alternatives. However, understanding uh, these impacts, this uh, calculation, these measurements is complex. Luckily, there are some tools to help with that. And our aim today is to introduce to you to one of such tools. Uh, and uh, we will complement this with examples from the ground from two uh, protected areas that uh, have been awarded the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism, the Colline Metallif Metallifere National Park and the La Garrocha Volcanic Zone Natural Park. So with no further ado, I will uh, pass the floor to Lucia Prieto Fustes, who is the Ecosystem Program Assistant from the YSCN, uh, Center for Mediterranean Cooperation. She will introduce first the, the MEET network, which has uh, developed such tool. So please, Lucia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Teresa, for the invitation and the presentation. And congratulations for the 50 years anniversary to the Europe Park Federation as well. Uh, I will try to share my screen now. Let's see if it works. OK. Great. Let me know if everything is uh, working fine. I hope so. If not, please let me know. <laughs> So um, 
Yes, today I will be sharing uh, our experience at the MIT Network. My name is Lucia Prieto, as Teresa said, and I work at the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Uh, we have our offices located in Malaga, in our Center for Mediterranean Cooperation, and we also host the Secretariat of the MIT Network Association. So I'm here representing both organizations. Um, the MIT network uh, is a, a network of different protected areas and several conservation and tourism organizations. So today I will not be alone here. I will have my MIT family with me. And uh, there will be Fabrizio presenting, Beth as well. Uh, they both come from previous project that, projects that have led to the MIT network. And uh, there will also be my colleague Serena Mancini from uh, the Global Footprint Network. And I will also have Elke Dens from uh, the Travel Foundation. So uh, for a bit of context, the MIT network is a network of Mediterranean protected areas that uh, are working together to protect the natural and cultural heritage of the region while promoting a different kind of tourism experience, more focused on ecotourism and on valorizing the different values of the region. So this association was founded by IUCN, Shuf Biosphere Reserve, which is in the um, Lebanon, and also Medpan. And now uh, the board of directors is composed of GFN, the Travel Foundation, Shuf, and IUCN. So we all work together to expand knowledge and share our experiences working with tourism and ecotourism in the Mediterranean region. So for a bit of context, uh, this is a bit where we come from. As I said, uh, we come from different EU-funded projects. So we were officially established in 2018, but we uh, previously worked on a project that was called MEET. And after that, we continue to develop the association via the uh, Destimed and Destimed Plus projects, in case you have heard about them. Um, until now, we have focused a lot on the north of the Mediterranean, but our intention is to expand to the south of the Mediterranean because we know that there is quite a lot of work to be done there. Uh, and to that end, we are currently collaborating with other projects such as the Reboot Med project and the Blue Tourism Initiative and other ones uh, with the objective of developing on the south. So uh, we are currently working in Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritania, and Lebanon, and the aim is to uh, focus a bit more in there. So uh, what do we do? So we work with protected areas. Uh, we try to put protected areas at the very center of every single travel experience that we create. Uh, here in the map, you can see the different protected areas where we have worked. And uh, what we do is create complete experiences. And when I say we, I mean, we as the whole family that is working on this, not we as me as a person, uh, we try to create complete experiences that are multi-day experiences and they include different aspects, food and drinks, transport and mobility, activities and services, and also accommodation. So uh, they are always uh, park-led ecotourism experiences. That's the most important part. They are locally crafted by uh, local stakeholders. I will explain a little bit more about this later. And uh, we measure its sustainability in a trusted way. So those are uh, some of the key components. And as you see here, these four values are the main values that we try to showcase, compassion, connection, community, and conservation. And how do we, how do, we do that? Well, we have developed a model that is called the MID model. And uh, it has four different steps. As you can see here on the left, uh, the first step is creating a local ecotourism cluster. Uh, this cluster is kind of a working group that is composed of public and private stakeholders, uh, both from the tourism uh, sector and the conservation sector, and also the local community is in it as well. So here, uh, the main two stakeholders that have to be there are the protected area and the local uh, tour operator. That's the minimum, but uh, if we have more, that will be better because we will be uh, making sure that we have uh, the bigger picture of the community included in it. So these stakeholders work together uh, from the very beginning to develop these ecotourism products. 
with a common vision. So uh, always having the conservation objectives of the protected area in mind when developing the product. So uh, once we have uh, created these local ecotourism clusters, we move on to the second phase, which is the ecotourism product development phase. Um, here, as I said, we are talking about complete experiences. So we include activities and services, accommodation, uh, food and drinks, transport, and also the tour operations. And we uh, treat it as a whole package, as a unique package. And we have a unique perspective on it. So it's not the first product development uh, stage. We think that it has to include also the improvement stage. So the product development doesn't stop when we have a product. It includes also its improvement and several iterations until we have uh, a nicer and nicer and nicer product. Um, so here, what we uh, include as well is the measuring part as part of the product development phase. So uh, the measuring of the quality and the sustainability of the package is included in the product development phase as well. So here we measure um, mainly the ecological footprint of the package. Uh, we will be explaining a little bit more about this uh, later on. Uh, we also examine its quality, uh, examine its uh, economic viability, uh, the conservation and the governance and the general quality of the product. So we end up with products that are uh, aligned with market trends and that are actually going to be viable in the tourism market. Um, so this is the model that we have developed. It is not a certification process at all. It's only a way of presenting uh, Mediterranean culture and nature as part of the storytelling of the travel experience. And uh, it's a way of incorporating it into the whole product development phase. So this is not uh, exclusive of other projects, such as the uh, Charter for Sustainable Tourism, for example, but it's a complementary way of developing ecotourism products. And as I said, uh, this hopefully leads to uh, the market inclusion of the packages and products that are created. And here just uh, an example of one uh, product that we develop in Albania that has been included by Intrepid Travel. I don't know if you know about this organization. It's one of the lead organizations about adventure travel in the world. So they have included our one of our most recent uh, experiences in their catalog. So that's to say that these products are actually reaching the market because the market is also asking about this type of products. So uh, this is a very brief introduction about the association and what we do. And um, we do think that it is always better to have a real example of how this works. And for that, we have uh, Fabrizio Santini with us uh, Fabrizio uh, usually uh, actually use the, the MIT methodology uh, in product development and product creation during a previous project that was called Testimed, and he will be presenting how was uh, his experience uh, using the MIT methodology and uh, the different challenges and opportunities that he found. So uh, let me stop sharing my screen for a moment and I will let Fabrizio share his screen now. So good morning to everyone. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you for to our host. Thank you to all the more than 140 people listening to us this morning. I will also share my presentation. Tell me if you can see it. Now that there is a little delay. Everything is okay. Yeah. Okay. So I work for the for a national park that is located in um, in Tuscany. But of course, it does not. The, 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 the title of my presentation is "The Heat of the Earth." So we start with this beautiful photo. That is one of our geo sites that also offer the opportunity for our territory to have energy, electric and heating energy from renewable sources, ge geothermal sources. But that's just the the nature that gave us this, this possibility. Um, the, the heat of the earth was the name of the first uh, Destimed meat package that we started with. 
just few information of where we are. We are in Tuscany. We are located in the southern part of Tuscany, central Italy. Doesn't uh, so that's that's the headquarters. That's the the place from where I'm calling and and uh, calling to you just at the moment. That's the view I have just in front of me. There, there is the Elba Islands, and uh, that's part of our geopark. The geopark was established in two thousand and twenty and two. At the beginning, was created. Uh, uh, with a territory of seven municipalities, 34 mining sites. We were speaking about five years, five million, five thousand years of, of history of mining. The first mining activities by us are about the fourth millennium before Christ. And the last mining activity were stopping in 1996. So it was also a challenge for our territory to be transformed from a mining territory to a tourism, sustainable tourism. Uh, territory, so a, a, a great challenge. What happened after 22, 20 years, last year we, we um, celebrate our 20 years, that now ten, uh, three municipalities more ask to enter in the park, and that's quite new, because normally municipality doesn't want to stay in a national park, but if they ask us uh, to, to, to join, it means that we work not so bad, we have not only more than 34 mining sites, but also 42 geosites, more than 130 hotspots to see at least half a day. And we have, starting from only three museums, today we have 16 museums and info points, what we call, what we call gateways to the park, distributed in all this very big uh, area, territory that it's uh, more than uh, 1,200 square kilometers. So some very fast view to the gateways to the park. Those are some photos, so some mining, my museum, some very new um, uh, technological museum on your right. You can enter seven kilometers under the earth with a video reproduction. And then uh, outdoor museum, archeological museum, many, many others. One of our characteristics is to work with private sector. This is a museum, that's a gateway to the park, but it's located in a private um, um, cellar. That's a beautiful cellar that was projected by Renzo Piano, that is in, in our, te our territory. And inside the cellar with the park, they realize an open a, a museum, a trust museum open also to the, to the visitors without uh, visiting the, the, the cellar. You have not to visit the cellar to see the museum. So that's a, an interesting thing because working with people, so involvement and participation, it's really a, an Europark methodology from when we started, this involving people and, and participate. That's one of our forum meetings. The forum, it's the big assembly. We have more than 100 people participating to discuss twice in the year the, the objective and target of the, of, the, of the park. We are so, as uh, Teresa said, and, and as Lucia said, so, uh, sustainable uh, destination since 2014. And since some uh, year, 2022, we are also European Charter part two and part three. Part three, phase three, it means to have a dedicated tour operator. So that's a bit the, 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 the process we are, we are facing or we faced in the past year. We start as a national park in 2002. We, we became a UNESCO Global Geopark in 2010. We started in 2013 to work with Europark and Federed Parki to get the first phase of the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism. We met the Meat family at that time was Meat Destimate in 2019. And up today, we are trying to work not only with tourism, but also with agriculture, also with industry, trying to set a complete green community in our park. But let's start from what we have now in the tourism section. So, so that's the, the main web page of our main partner. He's a tour operator. I think Carlo, he's listening to us. Uh, that's, that's the owner of the of the of the tour operator. So we see we have historical roots. No, well, that's a joke. Of course, he's him, but in a, in a feast, that's the real couple. It's a family owns very young uh, people, but very professional with many international activity and, and experiences. And most of all, they are located in our territory. 
what we do with this uh, portal at the moment we started with one package the heat of the earth in 2019 up to today we have uh, 32 different ecotouristic packages uh, differentiated in experience of half day or full day or real packages, three night, four days, four night, four night, five days, and so on. In all these categories that you see, e-bike, gourmet experiences, wine and food experience, there is something new. At the beginning, I have to say, we, we were a little bit snob. We, we didn't work with luxury sector and with golf. But with some years, we are starting to work also with them. So we have a full range of activity from uh, more, more cheap experience for families and also experience for more rich people. And on the, um, on the bottom of my slide, you see a screenshot of Visit Tuscany. Visit Tuscany, Toscana develop a proper regional system of selling and promo commercializing the packages. So in a twin way, we sell those products in our webpage and in the regional webpage. That's an example of what we can do, what you can do if you are a tourist. You can go and choose your package or your experience. You can choose if you want to do it by group. There is a minimum and a maximum. Normally we work between five and 15 people, not to have big groups and to, to, to give the opportunity to, to, to do a very um, live uh, living experience. Or second, cho uh, second cho choice that you can flag, it's you want a private tour. You book for yourself, for you, for your family, for your couple. Of course, the prices are different. But what you see in this page is that you can directly buy here with your credit cards. So uh, we made a little step, step further. It's not only promotional side, it's a really selling side. And this gave us an opportunity to start making business. That's one of the issues that was were taken by suggestion by the Meat Network. Compensation. I will I will speak later in a few seconds, in a few minutes, uh, about the um, calculation of the ecological footprint that we developed, thanks to the project estimate, thanks to the Meat Network, and to the Global Footprint Network Association. So we put in we can say to the clients coming by us to do this half day, this full day, this four night and five days activity, your footprint uh, your footprint is that one. So how you can help us to reduce it. We do things because also continuous improvement is what we do every year or every six months about the, the packages that we have having a look where we can reduce our impact, but where in the places, so in the moment in which we can't, for every one of the 32 packages, we say to the client, to the customer, that he will pay the 3% more, no, is included in the price, that the 3% the of the price is comprehensive of a payment for ecosystemic services. I mean, we explain to the customer, to the tourists, to the visitors, that when they come to us, we try together to reduce our impact, but anyhow, a little bit of impact is there. It's not avoidable. So what we can do together with the money that the people give to us through this methodology, this system, we make in local compensation action. This year, the photo of the Osprey, it's a uh, building of an Osprey net with the money of these uh, sustainable tourism activities. Last year, we were planting trees. Then we made collection of waste along the path. So all was starting with the estimate. I will go fast because already Lucia spoke about the estimate, how it was. The most important th thing is the creation of this LEC, local ecotourism cluster that we modify a little bit. For us today is LECOG, it's local ecotourism cooperative group because we have many of them. We have no more only one. We have groups of five people, a representative of the park, normally me, a representative of the tour operator, a representative of the guides, a representative of the accommodation, one of the restoration, and someone speaking about mobility and travel. No politician inside, very technical groups in which we decide which is the package we want to develop, 
how we speak in reduce how we act, which can be our action in reducing the impact from the accommodation viewpoint, from the restoration viewpoint, and so on. And that's a moment in which you can see we are working together. Very important and transparent is that we put in our website, the park the website, but also in the tour operator website, the link to the footprint calculator. So it's transparent. The people can go there, make a trial, see what happened, and, and uh, who is interested in discover the methodology. I know that, I think Serena will speak about, is coming out a new methodology now. We are eager to, we are waiting for it because we want to improve and to have better. So when we started with the first package, a group of uh, professional came to us, not only to us, to all the 13 national park or protected area involved in the Destimate project. And they were trying, really leaving as tourists the package controlling and checking the, profession, the professionalism of the service providers, the attractiveness of the, of, the, of the product, and also the ecological footprint. This is the group working, the team of professionals that they were testing our packages. This is the matrix they use. So I go very fast because just to tell you that there is a, a complex methodology behind. This is the results. Huh? where Colina Metalifera where was in comparison of the other. Um, so was a quite good performance, but we, we tried to, 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 to do better. And now we are in the big family, but also family business oriented. I mean, I mean, through the meat network, we can be in contact with many international tour operator that can help us to sell our, um, our product. So I think my time is expired. At the moment, I had a little bit of some photos explaining the first packages. We, we push people coming not by airplane, but by train. If they come by train, they have a reduction of the price. And the last things I want to say is that all the vehicles used in our packages are dri driven by drivers that has an eco driving license. It's a special test, it's a special training that we as a park, we do to drivers, but also to business people, teaching them to drive the same car you have without changing the car, but reducing the 20% of emission. And that's one of the peculiarity that we have. I think now I have to stop. I say thank you. My, my slides will be a little bit longer so that people can download some longer slides. Thank you for listening to me. I'm open to your question if there is something to, to, to ask me. Thank you so much, Fabrizio, for those interesting um, experiences that you have explained this 30% pavement for ecosystem services. Just one curiosity, is this compulsory or do visitors uh, can choose? No, it is, it is in, who buy things in our website, it is compulsory. Everyone who come has, the reduction can be if you come by train or if you come by car sharing. Okay. And and, and these very interesting uh, eco driving uh, lessons, do you also share them with your own staff, for example? Yeah, all, yeah. all in our staff we drive in this way. And every year we make two tra training in uh, cooperation with a Roman Italian uh, training uh, agency that is specialized in this. But also with businessmen, with the people who have to go okay. to work. So it's open. So the people who work in in, administ in administration, I mean, for municipal, it's open to the people of the forum. Okay, thank you. And just one question from the chat, and then we will give the floor to Lucia uh, again. Uh, Alfonso Vargas Sanchez would like to know more uh, about what is usually what is usually not visible. So the mechanism of tourism governance, if you can explain the role of communities in in, in the forum, how what they decide, the the inhabitants to make the, all this process uh, go forward. To be short, I have to tell you, yes, that the forum, it's a very important place where to discuss where to go every year. Of course, we study also the number of people being in the different spots of our park, trying to reduce uh, the overcrowded uh, places. We started with the community of a place, uh, number reduction in, in one of our beaches. This was a hard job because many people of the place didn't want to do it, but now everyone is happy because uh, it was too crowded and it was not a good service for the environment, for the landscape and for the tourism experience. 
in a in a place where five hundred people can stay, you can't put a thousand five hundred people. Yeah, and how did and you so do then, it exactly? How did you do it? How did you reduce the people to go to the beach? How? Pardon? How how, how do you do it? Now there is an app. There, is, a, an app. there is an app in which you, you can book. The, it's only one euro. You pay only one euro, so it's really not not so much. It's for all people. The people and un, 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 under fourteen years they don't pay at all. So family they pay only for two. But this gave us the opportunity only in three months in summer because in winter the, the beach is open, is not so crowded to give work a job to five to four young people that they check. They are like uh, rangers. They stay there. So it's also a little bit a creation of work, of job. And this was a good methodology, a good leverage to convince the people of the place to do this, to take this choice. Thank you so much, Fabricio, uh, for uh, sharing your experience. Now I'm going to give the floor to back to, to Lucia, so she can mm -hmm. explain the theory behind all these uh, methodology okay. and calculations. So Lucia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen again. Okay, I hope that this is working. So uh, now I will explain some a couple of different tools that we have uh, developed through the years that we think that can be useful, uh, not only for protected areas, but also for tour operators uh, developing these kind of packages and for any stakeholder that is involved in this kind of process. So uh, the first one that I wanted to mention is uh, the mid manual. This manual is uh, a thorough uh, guideline that explains uh, the mid model in detail and uh, the mid standard that is behind the uh, measuring of the quality and the environmental impact and social impact of the packages. So uh, this manual is quite comprehensive. So if you have later on any questions about what I have explained, uh, everything is written here in more detail, the different processes. So uh, an example of uh, the contents that you can find in here, uh, is how to develop and manage a local ecotourism cluster, how to create an ecotourism product that follows these steps that I mentioned, uh, how to measure and monitor the ecotourism product quality and sustainability, how to market this experience later on to the, to the uh, general public and mainly to outbound tour operators, and finally how you can easily incorporate different elements of sustainability into the product that you have developed. So um, all these documents and tools and resources that I will be mentioned are all available on MIT's uh, website. So if you have uh, an interest in any of them, you can go to the MIT network uh, website. I think that previously Teresa shared it on the chat, so you can find it in there. And uh, just a brief mention that all these documents and resources that I will be mentioning uh, have been developed in a very collaborative way with the help of many different people, for example, uh, with the help of the different partners of the project and also uh, the consultants and corner market. market. So um, we have quite a lot of different views incorporated into the tools and resources, and that's, that is what makes them uh, a, a good tool, I think. Um, so this is one of them. Then I also wanted to quickly present uh, two different resources and documents. Uh, one of them is a, a document that is directed to tourism boards on how to promote uh, ecotourism and ecotourism experiences in destinations. So it is quite interesting uh, to see how these uh, DMOs can move from being uh, destination management organizations to being destination marketing organizations, and even destination stewardship organizations. This is the, the way we are taking. And here you can find uh, different topics that can be pretty interesting to tourism boards, but not only to anyone that is willing to promote ecotourism in their region or destination. So uh, some of the topics you see here, are the uniqueness of ecotourism and ecotourists, how to deliver the right um, positive value that ecotourists are looking for, how to design transformative and memorable ecotourism experiences. Uh, I see that before Fabrizio had a slide on how to uh, create wow moments. So these incredible moments that tourists uh, will not forget when they get back home. 
uh, how to manage the promotion and branding of ecotourist destination and how to build a long-term relationship with ecotourists and ensure that they come one year after another. So this document has been developed thanks uh, to the collaboration with Ante Mandic, which is a researcher on tourism. So uh, we have his expert input in, into this document. And another one that I wanted to highlight as well is the one that you can see on the right side of the screen, which is a booklet of good practices uh, related to policy and governance in ecotourism. This was developed uh, thanks to any solution that helped us with this as well. So I'm trying to mention everyone to see that uh, it is indeed a collaborative effort to, to build all this knowledge. And uh, here you can find several different examples from the Mediterranean region around several topics such as governance, uh, communication and promotion, plans and strategies, legislation, financial instruments, training and knowledge, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are uh, two uh, pretty interesting documents that can be useful for you. And then uh, I move on to one of the key tools that I wanted to present today, which is the Ecotourism Indicator Monitoring Platform. Um, I Let me try to share um, my actual screen now. I hope you can see it properly. So this is the uh, monitoring platform that I was referring to. Uh, this platform uh, includes the four key tools that we have developed that are highlighting the standard that is behind uh, the, the measurement of the impact of the, uh, of the ecotourism experiences. So it is composed uh, of four different tools. The first one, which is this one, the Ecological Footprint Calculator that now uh, Serena will be helping me to, to explain it to you. Then you have the Social Impact Assessment of Ecotourism. You have another one, which is uh, how to assess the governance and the conservation of the uh, enabling conditions in the protected area, and also how to assess the quality of the product and its market uh, viability. So these are, these are the four different tools that are included in the platform. As you see here, you have the standard for reference, you have the mid manual, and once you enter into a different tools, you have uh, many other documents that are supporting uh, these four tools. Uh, you can navigate them. You also have a personal area where you can see all your different uh, surveys and forms. You can launch new forms, see different reports of the um, of the data that you have included in the different tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. The first one that we are going to be tackling today, I'm sorry, this is going to be a very short presentation to explain everything in detail, but we will be available after the webinar if you have any questions. Uh, so the first one that we will be explaining is the Ecological Footprint Calculator. That is this one. You have uh, a description in every tool explaining who is the person that should be using this tool, uh, what, do you, what to expect when you are using the tool, different instructions, uh, examples of how the results uh, are going to look like. And if you hit the start, start button, you go on to the calculator. So uh, going back now to the presentation, we will focus on this calculator and I will give the floor to my colleague Serena, who will explain this much better than, than I can explain it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lucia, and hello, everybody. My name is Serena Mancini, and I work at Global Footprint Network. So I, as Lucia has mentioned, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this footprint um, calculator and uh, why we, we have this tool. Because we didn't uh, meet, we didn't just assume that ecotourism has a lower impact on the environment, but we want to actually measure uh, in a quantitative terms uh, what is the impact of ecotourism products. So how we do this? Um, we, um, we do this by, uh, by using the ecological footprint methodology, uh, which is one of the most popular sustainability indicator, which is able to convert the human activities into the pressures placed 
on the ecosystem. And so it's a measure of the human demand on nature for the natural, for the natural resources that we use and ecosystem services that we again use. So we, so just to give you uh, an idea, we, we don't just um, uh, assess the carbon emission due to our activities, but also the natural resources, like for, for instance, the crops that we use for our, uh, for our food or the forest that we use for the uh, timbers products that we, that we use. So the ecological footprint can, can be applied at multiple levels, levels, from the global levels to the individual, and also for the um, economic sectors. So, uh, of course, tourism is one of the most important uh, uh, sectors. And when applied to tourism, the ecological footprint measures the amount of biological productive area that are needed to provide tourists with the services, the activities, and the experience that constitute an ecotourism product. So these activities, we uh, so basically, we divided the, activi the tourism activities and offerings offerings into four main categories that are uh, the accommodation, the food and drinks, the, the meals that are offered to tourists, the, the mobility that is used to move tourists from one place to another, and the actual activities uh, done uh, in, a, in a product. So um, uh, next slide, please. So we have this in, uh, in the previous project, Destimate and Destimate Plus, uh, together with our colleagues from Meter and all our all other uh, partners, we have designed and uh, created this online tool, which is freely available uh, and you can find in the Meet uh, platform, as Lucia has, has shown. Um, and these tools, uh, it um, automatizes the assessment of the ecological footprint of, an eco of, of a tourist product. So this tool is intended to be used mainly by the uh, manager of uh, protected areas, but also by tourist uh, operators. Uh, we, uh, you, you can use it and you can enter it freely without registration, but we highly suggest to use it by creating an account because in, in this way you will have many features, uh, like for instance, you can save progresses and results so you can go back anytime and you find what you already have inputted in there and the result that you, already, that you have already got. Um, this tool, um, it's uh, so this tool requires from the user side to input uh, kind of several uh, data that they need to collect on the ground and to collect from the service provider that are included in the in the products in the tourist product, and then the, the automatically the, the tool provide some default. Uh, result and uh, also it gives the possibility to get in touch with the meet members and also the global footprint network members to have more in-depth results and more guidance um, so next slide please very shortly I'll, I'm, I'm going to show you what are the default results that uh, you can get from the from the calculator. So um, basically, you you have the uh, total um, results, the total ecological footprint of the package, and this is a measure of the overall impact that the, that the package is causing. Then you can have the the value per tourist per day. So the ecological footprint per tourist and per day, and this is a measure that can be used to be compared across several uh, products or uh, multiple versions of the same product. Uh, most importantly, you also have the result broken down by the activities provided, offered in the, in the tourism uh, product. So you have the, the footprint split, by, uh, split into, the, into the four categories. So you have, um, uh, this make understand how much each, each activity contributes to the total footprint. And so the managers of this footprint product can identify where to intervene to eventually lower 
the footprint, the footprint impact of this uh, offer. Um, then as a, as a default result, you have some benchmarking with the meet standards, but most importantly, you, uh, you can, uh, as I said before, you can get in contact with meet and the GFN to have more in detailed results and mostly to have a guidance. We can help you in a very interactive way to uh, shape your product and to uh, eventually lower the footprint. So next slide, please. Uh, so here you can have a sense of what the, the, the in-depth results might be when you get in, in contact with us. So we, we can follow you in the development of the product in, in its multiple version. And so uh, we can help you reduce eventually the footprint of, of your package in, in, in the different versions of it. Um, and we can also give detailed results in each category of the tourism offerings. Offerings. So you can see here on the bottom left of the slide, you can have, uh, for instance, the, the food and drinks. Um, in the previous project, the food and drinks was found to be the uh, greatest, the, the main drivers of the footprint. So the, the meals offered to tourists were uh, were those impacting the most the the, um, the the overall products and we can give you when you get in touch with us we can give you more insight of why uh, for instance meals are impacting so much and so here in this graph on the bottom left you can see the breakdown of the um, of the meals and you can see which of the main meals is impacting more and so for instance see you can see that um, in the first version of this package the, the dinners were like having the higher um, the, the highest value of footprint but then in a second version of the of the of the same product, uh, the lunches were impacting uh, more. And this is because of some changes uh, happening in the product. And very uh, lastly, um, we, when you get in contact with us, we can put your product, the result of your product in comparison with a series of uh, results from other products that we have been assessed over the, over the years and that are part of the meat library and um, and finally we can also assess what is the ecological footprint of the travel to get to destination and so uh, and put this result in comparison with the, the with the footprint of the package itself and so as Fabrizio has mentioned or uh, tourists may come and may arrive to the destination either by flight or by train. And so we can see which mode is posing the lower pressure and which and how this compares to the, uh, let's say, the impact of the products itself. So uh, this is really in, in a very nutshell, the, the, the type of results that you can get from the tools, but we really welcome you to explore to explore it and get in touch with Meet or GFN to, I mean, to, for any support in the use of the, the tool and to um, analyze better in more details the results that you get. And now I give the floor back to Lucia again for the remaining yeah. of our presentation. Serena, can you just clarify something? What is the unit of measure of uh, the ecological footprint? I see you put GHA. But that yeah, is it's uh, global hectares. It's global hectares. Yeah, global hectare. It's a, but, an equivalent surface uh, measure. So we measure the area that is needed to provide the natural resources that are used. But even when it's about um, carbon emissions, you also use this unit? You yes, because okay. we not only assess the quantity of carbon emission, but also the area that is needed to sequester those emissions. So this is okay, the thank step you. for the Thank you for the gratification. So Lucia. Welcome.
Okay, thank you so much, Serena. I think that uh, you made it pretty clear considering the, the difficulty of, <laughs> of understanding this tool. So as you said, uh, we encourage you to, to use it, to test it. And then if you have any questions, uh, both GFN and Meet, uh, we are available to help you through the journey. Uh, and then very briefly, because I see that we are uh, running out of uh, time for this, this specific section, uh, I will go uh, back to the platform. And uh, just to explain very quickly the, the other type of tools that you can find in here besides the calculator. So uh, the rest of them are a uh, self-assessment service that includes some of the key elements that we think that have you have to take into account when developing and, and uh, evaluating these products. And uh, after replying to the survey, you will get your results according to the meet standard and also recommendations on how to improve. So. The, for example, if you go to the social impact assessment, uh, here you have the same explanation about uh, who can use it, how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. And here, if you click start, then you can uh, create your own itinerary. You can create as many itineraries as, as you want, but you have to take into account that what we can do here is evaluate multi-days uh, ecotourism experiences. So this, for the moment, does not work for isolated experiences. So as you say, uh, as you see here, you can include uh, the different accommodation providers, activity providers, food providers, transport, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then let me write a quick, silly example just to so that you can see how to move on. You create your itinerary. Up, oh, what happened here? technical problems. <laughs> Let me go to my personal area. I have one here. You can create your itinerary and then you can continue with the one that you started and you have uh, questions that you have to answer according to your level, uh, current level or uh, development in those specific topics. So for example, uh, we are touching on uh, the ratio of male and female members, uh, we are touching on working hours, we are uh, tackling uh, capacity building, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that has something to do with the social implications of uh, the ecotourism package, both from workers, from uh, local communities, from the value chain, and also from visitors. So this will be one. Then you have another one, which is the enabling conditions. So to assess the governance and conservation levels within the protected area. Same as the one before. So uh, you have several different uh, questions related to governance and conservation, and you have to reply according to uh, the reality in your protected area where the ecotourism package is being developed. And finally, the last one, which will be the uh, quality assessment of the product. Here the same, let me put a silly example. Up. You have it here. And here you have a set of 55 questions, the same as before, asking about the quality uh, of your uh, product. Uh, you have different questions such as the storytelling behind your product, uh, tour leading and tour guiding within the product, uh, the different uh, selection of suppliers that you have within the product, the itinerary design, those spectacular wow moments that we were mentioning. So uh, in a nutshell, how, uh, how you have developed the product and the quality of it. So this is it. As I said, this is a very quick example of how you can use it, but of course you can test it. And uh, just uh, have in mind that it, this is a beta version. We are still working on a, on a more uh, developed version of it, but it's uh, ready to, to be explored now. And I also wanted to quickly thank uh, Into Destination and Labox who helped us to develop this amazing platform. And we are very thankful for that. And also the different uh, partners that help us to work on it, such as uh, the Beta Tech Center from the University of B, WWF or the Creation Institute for Tourism. So this is the main tool. I think you have the link to the tool in the chat. 
And in any case, we, GFN, and Meet are available after the webinar. If you have any questions about how you can use it. So I stop again to give the floor to uh, my colleague Beth, and then I will retake the floor again. <laughs> Okay, thanks so much, uh, Lucy. I'll try to give you the most important information in order to get time enough for the rest of the presentation. So then I just uh, share my screen. And as uh, Fabrizio has done really good before, I'm going to explain a little bit our experience uh, with uh, the MIT project and actually in the Destinate Plus project. I have to tell you that um, I'm from a travel agency, Strascalia, and we are an incoming travel agency uh, working in the Pyrenees, in La Garrocha area, it's La Garrocha Volcanic Zone Natural Park, as you can see, is in the north uh, of Catalonia and Spain, and we're a travel agency since uh, 2013. And uh, from the beginning, is in, one, um, in, in our sense of thinking about uh, tourism, we've always been working with ecotourism. So we have a commitment uh, with the area where we're living and where we're working as well. And that's why we joined the European Chapter for Sustainable Tourism since 2017. And we just uh, renovated in 2021. And so we were the first travel agency with this uh, act right, with uh, the European Charter in Spain. So we are a member of several, as you can see, we're working mainly with two natural parts here, with the volcanic region and with the Cap de Pels. And uh, mainly what we're doing is uh, walking holidays. So we offer guided and self-guided walking holidays here in the Pyrenees from the Ripoles region to Lago Rocha and the Empordà. So what we call the Northeast area of uh, the Pyrenees. And then we work with wildlife tours. So we focus in, for example, butterflies or bear watching, or of course in geology, because it's our main, let's say, a hotspot here in the volcanic region. And we have a program for school groups as well. So we have school trips uh, for uh, groups mainly from Northern Europe. The thing is that when we join the Destinate Plus project uh, in this uh, Mid project, uh, our goals to get on that, because as you can understand from the beginning when we joined the Estimate Plus project, um, we were working uh, in the European Charter, so we develop already uh, ecotourism products. So we focus in three main goals. One was to uh, work or to develop uh, products uh, focusing on ecotourism, thinking in 4D. So it means this is personalization, so think about. Uh, products that we can sell all year round or the main selling of these products uh, not in the time that we have plenty of people. Then the other one was decentralization. Somebody mentioned that as well what happens when we have a lot of people in the same place at the same time. So I'm thinking about how we can just uh, allow the people to join different places at the most well-known ones. Then diversification, so that means uh, different kind of products, different kind of activities, not uh, like leave a little bit our comfort zone and think about another kind of activities we can do in the area. And then profit distribution, that was really important. And is still, that is when we're thinking in packages and ecotourism packages, we're thinking about the activities we are joining it, and we have to think about how we distribute the profits, so how we work with as much uh, companies working here, many accommodation, as somebody said, uh, and then the meals joining in different restaurants and so on. Then the other goal uh, we focused was the ecological footprint reduction. And actually, Selena has explained really good how the tool it works. So what we've done is to calculate uh, the total of the proposal, because until then, we just uh, were focusing on the transfers and the transport to get to La Garrocha and uh, as well to the part from here. But then we start to calculate uh, this uh, footprint from the whole proposal. And of course, the most important thing is not to have a number then, but how to improve that. So that's what we've done. And then the other thing we uh, were thinking about is that thing about visitor uh, payback. So it means how we can collaborate with the conservation uh, of the natural park or the area where we are visiting. And this was to get um, in contact or working with uh, the volcanic zone, so with the natural part, to check which uh, conservation projects they've got and in which way we can collaborate with them. Okay, now I'm going to show you the example. This is um, the name of the uh, ecotourism product we developed, it's working on the landscape. 
And I have to mention, and I'm so glad for that, because uh, last year we had some Star Awards from Europark because the contribution of the conservation. And this is thanks to actually the work we've done with the, the MID project. I'm going to show you directly uh, the web page of uh, this project. So this is how we explain that uh, for everybody. And uh, the main thing we explained about that, of course, the information about the area, uh, the itinerary you're going to follow, who are the local guides, who are the tour leaders, et cetera. Then we give information about the place where we're visiting, of course, the Volcanic Zone Natural Park. Most uh, like the places uh, has a lot of interest and uh, uh, nice to visit, so like the Viania, for example, or the Real Road. But as well, and as I said, the most important thing of a package, it's not only to know about uh, a conservation project, in this case, is the Cultivated Plants Conservation Center. Uh, that, of course, we explain what are the objective of the project, and then we explain what the research is doing that, and what the uh, things we're doing. And then afterwards, we explain, and uh, we have to uh, think about how important it is to talk about then the restaurants uh, that we are joining, where we have the meals, and how we work in the local products. For example, there's a visit to the local market, and as well, uh, we have the chance to go to an agritourism shop before they're leaving, so they can buy this kind of, let's say, not made in China souvenir that is only made here, so they can send with them back home. And uh, of course, we talk about uh, the accommodations. As you can see, all of them are partners from the ECST. And last but not least, uh, quite important, uh, how we move in the area. We're using these natural gas taxis coming from Barcelona airport, that is the closest one. Now we're working with people coming by train, that's another thing. But then we're using on-demand public transport. And uh, of course, uh, when we have transfers, in the area too. So this is more or less like a little bit of explanation. Of course, we have a video at the end and then how to get in contact with that. But this is just to give you an example of how is uh, the package, the one that we are selling uh, right now. Now I'm gonna go back again, sorry, to the presentation. So then what happened uh, to us, oops, sorry, it's open again. <laughs> Then what it happens, let's see if I can move, yes, is that when we were thinking, if you remember, I said that we want to sell the product during all year round. The problem is that if we want to focus in one only conservation project, then of course we cannot run that all year round because in each conservation project, uh, what we do is we explain how it's, uh, what we're doing, and then we have a chance to do a volunteer work in that project. So that's why the first uh, thing we've done with the natural park is to check what kind of conservation projects they're running that will be able for us to give a chance for the visitors or the people joining this uh, product to collaborate as a volunteer work. So the first thing was to do a list and then check what is the best season to collaborate in each one. So at the end, what I can tell you is that we've been working with that goals. Now we are selling that to two different tour operators. And what uh, allowed us to improve not only was this uh, ecological footprint that uh, Serena explained how it works, but as well, uh, it works uh, or would help us to design attractive ecotourism uh, products or very competitive and uh, really good for the two operators we were working with. Then the other thing was to improve the relation between the different partners uh, as a partnership in the ecotourism association, actually here on the top, you can see Trescali is the name of the travel agency. But when we're talking about tourism, Rocha is the association that it's private and public. And then the natural park, like Rocha Volcanic Zone Natural Park. So because of the work we've done with the mid projects, then we now we're focusing on new challenges because there's more relation between everybody. And then the other thing that uh, we improved was the storytelling, like the design you've seen, for example, of the package. And it's uh, the storytelling of an ecotourism experience and uh, focusing on the value of sustainability and how it helps for us to communicate the sustainability in order to sell our product. So this is like the three points that we notice that we've been improving then uh, working in that project. And uh, I think that uh, I'm on time. <laughs> so thanks so much uh, to listen to me. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, then I will join the chat too. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Beth. Just
two, 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 two uh, questions. So what do you have a specific profile of, uh, of uh, tourism that are um, that would like to do this volunteerism? I mean, about gender, about nationalities, about age. Is there any? I can you? tell you. The, I can tell you. At the beginning, we were focusing on that. What kind of tourism we expect? Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we sell that to the operators. And then for the tour operators, they've seen an opportunity, not only for ecotourism people, I mean, people that identify as themselves uh, for ecotourism uh, visitors, mm -hmm. but as well general ones. So everybody feels uh, like they are helping really, not only knowing what we're doing for the conservation, but that they can help a little bit on that. And they realize because they're doing, but I mean, it's true. It's not only giving money that they can do it, but that they collaborate. Okay. It's about this experience. And then the second question, how difficult is to to use this tool that Lucia has, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and okay. has explained? Is it I can tell you that yeah. at the end, it looks much better than what we've done at the beginning. That is true, yeah, because we're working you now with the app. And I can tell you, it's not something, I mean, you have to be sure what you want to transfer on that. This is the main thing. It's not something that you just add the information and then every <laughs> day you're going to change it. And actually because Serena, she has done a comparison like what's happening first and what's happening next. So for us, just give us an idea what is happening, in which point we are, what is the main things we should focus on. And I can tell you that surprising for us was that meals, I mean, all the foods and accommodation has a big impact on the ecological footprint. So then it gives you a help on what we're going to improve. And then after you're doing the changes, then you can check that again, okay? But it's not something that you check every day, yeah? It's something that you have to think, first of all, what do you want to do? And then you're doing changes on that, and then you can compare that. Mm -hmm. And I guess what is going to be difficult is to get information no, about the meals and how But I can do... tell you that something yeah. that they didn't mention, that is that when you're getting that information, you're doing a bit, uh, I mean, uh, an education about what's involved on that. And that is very good, helpful, mainly with restaurants, because they understand that yeah. what, how important it is, where they buy the things, how they work on that, and so on. So for me, there's a factor for us here in like a Russian experience is that um, help us to talk about this with the different providers. Okay, thank you so much uh, for your contribution, Beth. And I give the floor back to Lucia so that we are so all much. in time. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, just to say that I think what Beth has just mentioned is very important. This tool is not just to have the number of your ecological footprint and that's it, that, that's not the point of it. So we measure things so we can manage in a better way. So this is the point of using the tool, having an idea of what we are already doing in a great way, what we have to improve and how we can do it. So I think that that's the, the main message behind this quite, can be tricky to get used to it, but once you know how to use it, the results are there and you can then improve those uh, and make those changes uh, having the data by backing you up. So I think that's that's the main point. So yes, quickly back to sharing my screen. Uh, here we go. Okay, so the last thing that we want to present today are four new online courses that we are launching in IUCN Academy. Uh, we have developed these courses in collaboration with Training Aid and the Travel Foundation and with many collaborators that have uh, developed specific videos or courses or sections for, for these courses and modules. And uh, now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Elke from the Travel Foundation, who will be explaining a little bit about these courses and then we will show to you how uh, what's their aspect and how do they look like. Yes, thank you, Lucia. And um, maybe if I can, first of all, say how proud we are to be a partner in this, uh, because at the Travel Foundation, we want to make the mainstream tourism more climate friendly, and we want to increase the local benefits. And the example that Beth just gave about food is a perfect example to do those two things. So I, I just want to say we love what you do and we want to stimulate um, all of you to develop more ecotourism products. And that's why we developed this course. We took learnings, case studies. We took some theories from the best professors and we gathered all this information in an online training. 
And um, why is this also important? I think because if you look at the figures, like mainstream tourism is to grow annually with 4%, but ecotourism will grow minimum by 15% in the next uh, 10 years. So it's very promising, but it's also coming towards us. And I think we need to be ready, all of us, the protected areas, the tour operators, uh, also DMOs, um, and maybe especially in the Mediterranean area, because yeah, we have the threat of climate change there. We know that people will also come to visit uh, our destinations outside summer season, so in other seasons, and will not stay only at the beach or in the hot cities, but also go to find nature. So we need to be prepared for this. And that's, I think, the whole idea about this course. How can we make people better prepared? So it's really a capacity building. It You can do it at your own pace. You can find those topics that are mostly interesting to you, because you'll see that not every topic is as relevant for every one of you, but I think it is an integrated course and you can find something uh, that, that you can learn from. So maybe quickly just go to the different topics. Um, and the first one is uh, maybe to uh, reference back to uh, Alfonso's question. What is sometimes invisible is the governance structure behind it. So the first, on the next slide, you'll see the first topic is how do you develop these uh, ecotourism partnerships because it's people from conservation and people from tourism who do not always talk to each other. So how can you set up a good co cooperation? How do you find them? How can you involve local communities in this? Um, so it's all good questions and we have we have found some general principles and some good coordination guidelines to make this work on the long term. And so maybe you can learn from that. Uh, and again, it's different modules, uh, so it's a key concept. So how do you make people participate? How do you keep them engaged? And how do you work around this select local ecotourism cluster? Um, and then a second one is how do you develop then this uh, itinerary? Lucia already presented the, the module for it, but so here's some, some few, few uh, videos or um, um, information that you can find on the development of an itinerary that is different and that will maximize benefits for the local communities and keep the footprint uh, the lowest as possible. Um, and yeah, it's also about packaging the ecotourism product. And I think also there, Fabrizio was telling about half day or a full day product. I think there is a demand for multiple day products and people are willing to pay for it. So how can we prepare for those uh, multi-days itineraries? And how can we also look at the, the demand side? Because they will want to be secured about health and safety and box uh, information and all these little things that we might not think of. So that's a chapter on its own. Then another chapter is about uh, guiding and storytelling. Uh, so when Fabrizio was talking about the wow uh, experience, how do we do that? And are there some tricks here that could help us? So again, this is maybe also interesting for guides and for tour leaders. Uh, we will provide you also with some specific interpretation techniques. Uh, but most of all, people are choosing for this kind of holiday because of the, the meaningfulness. They want to learn from you and, and, the, and the authenticity. So, so let's not do like the, the mainstream tour guide and just tell, tell a, an interesting story so that people will laugh. No, I think there's multiple techniques. There's a multi-layered approach and you will find that in the course and of course some case studies to inspire you more. Um, and last but not least, so there's also a marketing uh, chapter, um, which is not aimed for growth, as the mainstream tourism often still is. This is really aiming at impact, impact for the local community, for the protected area, um, and of course also for the visitors. And here it is also important to work with tour operators, commercial partners, uh, to look at a good price um, because people, like I said, are willing to pay for it. So how can we sell this product together with, with local tour operators? And, and, and again, how can we package and market it? Um, so yeah, I think there's maybe a bit of interesting things for everyone. Uh, you can pick and choose. You can look at um, yeah, ways that also suit your learning style, uh, whether it's case studies or whether it's more in-depth reading. Uh, it's a combination of, of all, a lot of things. And yeah, um, I hope you find it interesting. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Elke, for these interesting courses. I hope I will have time myself to, to follow some of them. I also take the occasion to, to say that uh, Europar, we also have our own uh, academy, the European Natural Academy. Uh, we have a basic course on uh, sustainable tourism uh, training for tomorrow, just it's linked to, to, to the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism in protected areas, to the basic principles that we have. I put the, uh, in the chat the link in the in the event you are interested. Um, I thank you, uh, all the presenters, uh, for the session today. I thank you, all the attendees, for your presence today. I hope this uh, webinar uh, has shed a little bit of light uh, and has encouraged you to uh, try to understand what are the impacts uh, that uh, and the activities that are taking place in, in your protected areas in, in the travel um, travel products that we are producing uh, are so that you can also start thinking in ways of reducing them or if not to compensate them. We have here today very, very interesting examples. So I really invite you to explore more on that, to, 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 to try to, 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 to use this, the, the, this tool even if it is going to take time, if it is, you will not need to come back to the to the yeah UCN, but they say they are open for that. So that all together, we uh, as, as as a community, as a family, uh, interested in 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 protected areas and 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 and, and tourism in them, that we we really uh, reach to to have a more climate friendly but also ecological friendly uh, tourism. Thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, uh, put in, in, in the chat a, a survey. So if you, my, Esther Bossing, my colleague has already done it, please just take two minutes, two minutes to, to answer so that uh, the survey, so that we learn to, to improve uh, our webinars uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presence today.